You know, it's a strange point in time when you're complaining about the fact that there's a fifth Indiana Jones movie when we have a 10th Fast and Furious movie and a 7th Mission Impossible movie coming out in the same year. Times are weird. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, for those of you who have watched my channel over the years, you'll know that I'm a massive Indiana Jones fan. I don't wear this hat just because it's a prop, but Indiana Jones, quite frankly, is my favorite fictional film character of all time. I've watched the original three countless times. I have watched The Last Crusade more times than I could count. It is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. It is one of the best film going experiences I've ever had. Quite literally, Last Crusade is one of the best movies ever made. I will fight people on that. So when The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out back when I was in high school, I was super stoked. I brought this hat and everything. I then didn't watch it again for 10 years and I still didn't like it. So going into the Dial of Destiny, I had the thought of, well, it has to be that movie. But then all of the hubbub, like the good, the bad, the ugly that has come out about this movie before it came out, was so damning that I had to just have a hope that just don't be awful. And technically speaking, it's not. This film follows Indiana Jones in the very, very tail end of his career. He's really in a loss because the space race is going on. Astronauts just landed on the moon. No one talks about archaeology anymore. He literally feels like the very things that he has been talking about, dead, ancient, and no one gives a shit about. So when his goddaughter, who is related to Toby Jones, who is in this very entertaining, yet kind of odd uh, opening sequence with him fighting Nazis, that whole CG effect with him in his face is really cool, actually. I have to admit, it's not bad. There are certain elements, particularly the eyes, that they still have not got. It's got that dead eye kind of look, so that's a little bit disjointing. But I was okay with it until he opened his mouth. You remember that bit in The Irishman where Robert De Niro stomps that guy and we all just laughed because it looks like an 80-year-old man trying to pretend to be a 30-year-old man stomping a person? That's kind of how Indy feels throughout this whole movie. I don't know why they didn't do this considering they did this with The Mandalorian and young Luke Skywalker, but they didn't run his voice through an AI to make him sound younger. He sounds like old Indy while as young Indy, and it is the most disjointed experience I had from the whole movie. The opening that a lot of people have talked about as being a really great action sequence, while yes, it is, it's pretty fun, is so odd every time he speaks. It's just so disjointing. The film majority centers around Mads Mikkelsen's Nazi doctor, and he's after the Archimedes time dial, and Indy's trying to stop that with the help of his goddaughter, which a lot of people have gotten a lot of way about because a lot of people don't like Phoebe. I'll admit Phoebe's done some odd stuff here and there, but she's really good in Fleabag. One of the better parts of why Killing Eve was so good. She's okay in this. I think she's all right. She's similar to that of uh, Marion. She's similar to that of the Fraulein from The Last Crusade. I think that they work together okay. It's not exceptional. It's nowhere near on the same level as any of the companions that Indiana Jones had in the original trilogy. However, there is nowhere near as much cringe in this movie compared to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I cringe so much re-watching that movie. I cringe at Shia LaBeouf's introduction. I cringe at him swinging through the trees. I cringe at Ray Winestone's character. I cringe at the entire falsehood that was that entire car sequence through the Amazon. This movie has two very long chase sequences, which for the most part are done practically. Sure, there's a little bit of added CG here and there, but the car chases are real for the most part. And even like Indy gets on a real horse and he rides through a subway and whatnot. I like that. I like that there was this focus on it because that was something that was just so absent from the last one, that total dive into the production style of the Star Wars prequels, especially two and three, that Indy 4 did was just so disjointing. And this movie thankfully doesn't do that to the most part. There are some random elements to this film that drag out the runtime way longer than it needs to be. Antonio Banderas is in this movie, but you blink and you'll miss him. I don't know why he's even in this. I don't know why they didn't bring like the captain from the first movie, the one who was on the boat who tried to hold Marion from the Nazis and whatnot. I don't know if the actor's alive or dead or not, 
but I thought he would have been cool to come back for this role, but ooh. The thing that this movie does have is it does have a sense of mystery. You are interested in what is going on it far more than the fucking Crystal Skull bullshit. I actually do very much like how the movie ends in terms of its climax. I think it gets really wacky, but in a good way. I enjoy that element to it, and I almost enjoy the sincerity of it. I did hear from a few sources of what the other ending was supposed to be, and yeah, if they had gone that route, they would have pissed a ton of people off. I'll talk about that at the end of the review. I'll, I'll do a little spoiler talk about that. But I like how it ends somewhat better-ish than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Truly speaking, Flash Crusade is the ending. It is literally them riding off in the, to the fucking sunset. So to have your ending for the third time, it, it's a little dry, but there's nothing crucial about this movie that I can say is bad. Is it entertaining? Technically speaking, yes. Is it poorly made? Technically speaking, no. Is it fun? That is the biggest question. I went and saw this on a cheap Tuesday, and I kind of felt a little bit upset that I saw it in IMAX. I wanted to hear John Williams score because this might be the last time he does any work. I don't know. The guy keeps on bringing himself out of retirement. I think death is the only thing that's going to stop him. I would watch this on the cheapest possible means possible. I still say it's a theater movie, but it's not IMAX. It's not AVX. It's regular. Go and watch it in a regular theater. Thank God it's not in 3D. I feel that this movie is missing one of the elements that just made those indie movies so good, and that was the fun. I think that The Dial of Destiny is a lot better than some people are saying it is, but it is nowhere near as good as others are saying. Anyone who has had the audacity to compare this to the original trilogy is out to fucking lunch. Is it better than The Crystal Skull? I actually probably wouldn't disagree. I like this more. I didn't leave the theater with massive disappointment on my shoulders. Mind you, I kind of went in with expected disappointment, so maybe that might have been the case. I think that the Dial of Destiny is subpar at best. It's okay. It is nothing exceptional. It's nothing worthy, truly speaking, of the Indiana Jones brand, but it could have been so much worse. And that is why I think it's okay. And that's the best I can give it. So in the end, I'm going to give Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny a 3 out of 7. The reason why it's not in the positive is because I will not rewatch this. I just couldn't. It's not fun enough to rewatch, especially with that length. I will go and watch the original trilogy. I will not rewatch this one again. Not in the theaters anyways. Now let's talk about the spoiler bit. For those of you who don't want to know anything, this is where the video ends. Tell me what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Don't spoil. Now we're going to talk about it. Okay, so the ending originally was supposed to be when they went back in time and they're amongst all the Romans and the Greeks fighting each other. Supposedly Indy was going to die there and Phoebe Waller-Bridge was going to take his hat he was going to pass it along to her, and then she was going to go and relive all of his adventures. This was kind of a proposed idea for a franchise. That would have gone over so badly. That would have just tarnished everything. And they say that they didn't do it. They say that that wasn't going to happen. But immediately after that leak came out and the vitriol of internet talk that was about it, they just so happened to reshoot the ending. So I don't know if that is what was going to happen, but it does sound like they originally had an idea and they did not go with it. Just end it. Just end Indiana Jones, please. Let the fucking dude retire. He cannot do anymore. The fact that Harrison got hurt two times during this and he looks like a frail old fucking man throughout this whole movie. Just, just don't do it. Just let the goddamn series die. Please, please. As one indie fan, to the people who own him. Just let it die. Just let it die. Let the past die. Oh, God. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.